Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Making Mannequin Heads into Planters. Woo, the crowd goes wild. Hi, how you doing? It's been a long time since I saw you. Not really, it's actually been about a week, actually. Um, so when I last left you, Barney, my sister named it. Hey, Terry, I love the name. Barney, the Barnacle Man, <laughs> right? Yeah, wacky family got to love it. Oh, he's got horns. Bum, 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 bum. Um, Barney, the Barnacle Man, got pretty much finished. Pretty sweet, right? Really crazy. What the heck am I going to do with this? Well, I'm going to paint it. So what I'm going to do, though, I mean, I've been like, la, 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 what am I going to do? Try and figure out what in the world... To do for paint on this so i was debating on trying to do some sort of like this around it i'm like nah, there's no way um just because going around it it's not gonna happen that however is going to happen similar something similar like a really like um simplified version on this guy here i have determined and decided and finalized my idea so I did a little prep for you today of getting my stuff together, my sh together. And so you will see behind me, blah, um, colors. These are the sample pots that I was telling you about, the sample, whatever you want to call them. So just word to the wise, someone um, didn't teach me this. And I figured it out on my own the hard way. <clears throat> when you take the lid off of one of these little jars of paint um first of all get the goop that has dried throw it away because you don't want it down in the paint wherever possible um and i mean you don't need to be fastidious about it, especially if you're doing stuff like i do like this or large-scale paint paintings but you don't want goobers on unless you like goobers on your your paintings and then hey leave the goobers on there but if you want a little, little like a smoother surface or a nicer surface, um, definitely worth taking the goobers and the the, the um, <clears throat> dried spot, dried crusty stuff off. All right. Also, have paper towels readily available. And something I hadn't done before because I really wasn't painting, painting. I was just kind of making up painting. Uh, have some water. So, word to the wise. Here's a little trick that I do. I reuse bottles for my water. This is a soda bottle. These are not very stable because they got the little nub in bottoms. You see the little nubs? Yeah, that's not so good. Roll the tape. Doesn't matter how much is on the tape or not. Flop the tape down, put the bottle in the tape, and suddenly you've got a much more stable vessel for your water. So I, I usually keep two. Um, one for lighter colors, one for darker. I do um, not keep water when I do my large paintings because everything is mixed on the canvas and I don't rinse brushes as I go. I'm going to switch these two. Oh, jeez. Ah. And uh, not tip it over. That's my other thing is um, I have in the past many times just tipped them over. So what I'm thinking of, and this is kind of where my brain is going, I'm going to use this like one of my canvases and I'm going to paint around the shells. Now I may end up painting the shells. It doesn't really matter. I, I know I'm going to paint the shells, but I want to see what it looks like without painting the shells first. So in order to do that, I have to not paint the shells. The shells, the little shells. Doobie doo. So here we go. I'm just gonna dig right in. How is this brush that I got? Oh, it's a little stiff. There we go. Dig right in. I'm just gonna start painting. Uh, it's not gonna be exact around the shells because it's outside. Remember the mantra? Yeah. So, but it's gonna change this up a lot. Um, I'm doing blues because this is kind of an aqua -y theme, right? Now this is the flap that goes inside. I still, in case it's seen, I'm going to paint it. I'm not sure how much it's going to be seen or not seen. Um, I need to start wearing glasses down here to be able to see everything or put in my eye drops. 
I've started those eye drops, the Vuity eye drops for up, you know, close. I wanted to try them out. Went to my ophthalmologist, ophthalmologist. And um, yes, it's a very funny word in the mouth, ophthalmologist. There's a little, little, little going on. Um, and she was like, yeah, check them out, try them out, report back to us. We don't have a lot of people because I saw an ad somewhere. It's so rare that I actually see ads anywhere, you know, because everything is streaming. But I saw an ad somehow. We were probably traveling and I had to watch regular TV, which I don't normally do when, when out and about. Um, but anyway, so I was like, hey, that looks pretty freaking cool. My eyesight as of 50 went down the crapper for a close up. So I would like to be able to see up close again without glasses. So got a script for it. Um, I did find, so they say, you know, side effects, you know, of course, read the side effects before you take, you know, use something like that. Um, can be, oh, this is coming out cool. I like it, I like it. Um, can be headaches when you take them. Yes. Right there. And it said right between the eyes, like right there. If, if I do both eyes, it's like, oh Lord. Like it, like, because it changes the pressure in your eye or something and the, the blah, 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 and the who's even what's it and the thingamabob. And uh, those are all the technical terms for what it does to your eyes balls. Uh, but it makes it so your pupil does or doesn't dilate. It actually doesn't dilate, which gives you somehow a clo better closer vision. Anyway, it changes all of that. So, and it definitely does change that. Um, but so I can't deal with it in both eyes because it also diminishes, diminishes, reduces, whatever. Uh, it makes your eyesight uh, blurrier uh, for distance vision which is kind of like, well, that can't happen. Uh, I got my eyes fixed over a decade ago uh, with LASIK and to great success, 2010 vision, zoom eyeballs that I have. Um, but, um, and I still have it, you know, over a decade later, I still have this excellent vision. I'm one of the lucky ones. My vision wasn't like that terrible to start with. But and I got the I got it done right. It was actually really an odd experience, but it was fabulous um, results. So I found that if I just I, I can't deal with like the rest of my vision getting imp like diminished, impaired, whatever, lessened. Um, I'm just I guess delicate that way. I'm a delicate flower. Don't wilt my petals. Um, so. I tried it, I troted it, tried it, it in my just one eye, my non-dominant eye. First I tried it in my dominant eye. Well, that was not good. I couldn't see for the whole freaking day. Um, I could see up close just fine. It works. I mean, it actually does work. You can actually see up close. It's pretty freaking cool. Um, but my friend Faith Hamilton Trent got um she was she is uh she was a friend of mine in kansas city she is a friend of mine now who lives elsewhere on an island um brilliant incredibly brilliant musician fabulous woman just a ray of sunshine and joyful incredible talent fabulous lady just like just one of those people that, you know that you meet where you go you i i just love you so much um there are a few people like that in my life that i just still to this day when i see them i go oh i still love you so much you're an amazing person she's one of those people faith hamilton trent um she's just incredible so anyway so faith is a fabulous pianist accompanist wonderful singer uh plays the harp i mean you know she's one of those people <laughs> where you said the guy oh my god you're so talented let me do everything with you so she got her eyes fixed, if I remember correctly, and had one, this is the, my recollection. Now, if this is completely wrong, my recollection is my recollection and I'm not going back on it. Um, but anyway, so I thought of her while I was doing it and I was like, I, as far as I remember, there was something like bizarre about the way that she did her vision in that she had one close and one far away. 
And I was like, that to me is brilliant. So I tried the dominant eye with the view of T on the dominant eye and just leaving my other eye regular, right? Well, that was not good. It was, it was just hard to see. And I guess I'm really right eye dominant. Um, so I did it the other way. I was like, well, let's try it. Different permutations of this as options. And boy, howdy, I like it. It worked really, 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 really well. Like I will start the day for work. Uh, I work as a paralegal during the day, if you didn't know that. Um, in a family, ooh, family law firm. I almost lost, lost part of one of the, the chunks there. And um, so I'm reading stuff, you know, on the screen, off the screen, blah, 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 back and forth. And I was like, well, I want to be able to see my screens without straining, but also want to be able to read th stuff that's on my desk in front of me. And um, putting it in the left eye, boy, howdy. That worked really, really nicely. And uh, there we go. So I've been doing that. If I know that I'm going to be reading, like drafting papers that are not just fully digital, um, I put a drop in my eye, give it about half an hour to really fully sort of be in relaxed mode. Because when you first do it, it's intense. And then it relaxes out. And then during the day, it just sort of stays. And you can see it's pretty cool. So anyway, so I need to do, what is funny is that like one eye, if you get in a darker situation, my right eye where I don't have it will be like giant pupil. And I look like I'm David Bowie. Because my, well, I don't look like David Bowie, obviously, ever. Um, but unless my hair is spiked and white. And then I used to when I was a kid. But anyway, so then the other eye will be the pupil that where I put the, the stuff in will be all tiny and very blue. And it's like, oh, Lord, that's kind of weird and freaky looking and really rather cool. So, all right. So what you can see I'm doing here, I'm taking mainly from, I'm taking a super blue, super dark blue, which are the these two here. You can see them. These one, dark blue, dark, dark. This is a medium, this is super light, and this is a gray blue. So I'm taking them and just dipping, I'll dip into the, the paint and the dark. And then this, this lighter one here, the reason I have a few of them is because they're also different consistencies. This one has dried out a little bit, which I kind of like. It's thicker, pastier, and I can do different things. But what I'm doing is, I, as you can see, I'm working quickly as I work around. This is acrylic paint. Um, or latex acrylic. I don't know what the difference is, quite honestly. You can tell me in the comments if you would, please. Uh, this is latex paint as far as I know. Samples from hardware stores. Different hardware stores, different samples, right? So uh, these are the Oops paint samples that I've mentioned numerous times in the past uh, because they're nice, inexpensive ways to get significant volumes of premixed paints that I can always, you know, I can always mix myself if I want. I have my tubes of paint, which I absolutely love. Um, my favorite brand, by the way, is um, not the cheapest brand. See, that dark blue is very thin. Like consistency-wise, it actually drips, which is kind of weird. It doesn't have the greatest coverage. Um, so my favorite brand is this, Windsor & Newton. It's been around forever. It's just when I work in acrylics, I really love the thickness of it. When I work on large canvases, however, I don't use it because I would, I do use it at times. I will mix with it uh, on the canvas at times, depending on what size I'm working on. But it ends up, because um, I, I sometimes I want a lot of weight to the paint that I'm working with, so I can really dig in and, and get um, some texture on the canvas. And that is, it is heavier, thicker paint, I, or I want better coverage in certain areas. And then other times I just want to really be able to blend with a, a sort of an opacity that these other 
uh, cheaper paints will have. So just re remember, different paints have different weights to them, different thicknesses, different viscosity. It's a great word, viscosity. Oh, you're so viscous. Um, <laughs> what can I do? Uh, there we go. And if you watch the way I'm doing this, I'm just putting it on heavy and then I blend it through and leave it streaky. I'm not over overworking it. If you overwork, I mean, it, I can go over it a section, let it dry a little bit, which is kind of cool, and then come back through. And, ooh, oh, I just whacked the side of that. Oh, I got a little wacky with my brush and those came right off. So I need to really paint them sooner than later to get them more stable. I could just spray paint them, but whatever. So anyway, so as I'm doing this, I want to keep it wet wherever possible. And as you can see, I do work from section to section. Now that allows the paint to dry a little bit. And therefore, when I go over it, it'll go over a little bit rougher and um, not so wet on wet constantly the whole time. Um, also, some of these colors do cover better because of the viscosity of it, the thickness of it. Um, so I'm going to let it dry a little bit. And acrylic, just so you know, I mean, it dries really fast, um, which is why some people don't like working in it. Like if you're used to working in <clears throat> watercolors or uh, in oils especially, going from oils into acrylics is two wholly different, like whole different worlds of experience. Let's get some of this, this very light <clears throat> in here while this is wet and I can pull it through. See how light it is that it'll use the wetness of the dark blue. Maybe I can show you while I'm doing it and it'll streak it in. And then I'll leave a section over here dark, but I'll blend it so that it all sort of works in zones. See how pretty that's coming in? Yes, 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 yes. Let me work more on the face while you're looking at it. This is the thick blue. Get it right in here. And yes, I'm getting it on the barnacles and the shells but I'm not using it on the barnacles and shells because I'm not sure what colors. I don't want too much blue on them because I want to give myself options and keep those options open for, like if I'm going to use a lighter color, I'm going to have to work less hard if I'm just coming with a white base or mostly white base for the barnacles. Um, so I'm not really sure. I think I want them to look like coral Actually, I know I want them to look like coral. I don't know why I'm saying I think I want them to look like coral. I was thinking it would be cool to have them look like coral and therefore be really bright. I think that would be really gorgeous. Ooh, get under his, get under his schnoz. Tilt it as needed. Let's get a little white. Oh, right up in those. Oh, <laughs> it makes my nose twitch. Get up right in his nostrils. All righty. These are delicate, so be careful around them if you do this. I do recommend you just play with different um, wacky um, things to paint on. You know, I would never have been able to tell you at any point this year that this was something I was going to be doing. So I... <laughs> A lot of people are like, so what's the deal with your weird, like really weird videos that you're doing? And I was like, Larry's one of them. He was, he's, he was asking me when we went camping this past, past weekend at White Memorial Campground, which is fabulous if you have a chance to go. It is very, um, there are no services or anything. So like, AKA, like you can dump, do the, do the, um, the sewer dump on your way out, but there's no like while you're there type of thing. There's no electricity. Um, there's water from spigots. It's, you know, it's really cool. 
and it'd be right on a peninsula on Lake uh, Bantam Lake. It's Point Folly on Bantam Lake. It's this really beautiful space. Anyway, so he was talking, we were driving there. It's about 45 minutes from here. And he said, so how many videos do you plan on doing? <laughs> it's just like, well, I'm gonna do as many videos as it takes for me to be done with what I'm working on. It's a summer project. And um, he was like, okay. And like, as in, that's a concept, I guess. It's an open-ended idea. I'm like, yeah, it's just kind of, you know, it's fun, it's wacky, it's different. And what I like about doing this, what's fun that I hope you're enjoying, is that it's, you know, just sort of organic and I come down and I, obviously I'm in the basement, as you know, and I come down and I spend 20 or 40 minutes with you or an hour with you. And um, I'm, I get it. I get to paint, I get to be creative, and I don't have to like set aside a whole day to do it. I'm doing it when I have time, and I'll come down and spend some time working on a project and then leave it and think about it and then go back upstairs to the right real world and do whatever I need to do up there with whomever I need to do, and then I get to come down here and be with you. And we get to explore all these weird, wacky things together. Um, my audience that I'm, some of whom I've met and others I've never met. Um, and it's really cool. I've, I've been enjoying it and I don't care if people don't get it. Um, I really actually don't, it, it doesn't, I shouldn't say I don't care. Of course I care, I want you to get it. Um, I care too much, man. Uh, no, it, it doesn't, however, it doesn't change whether or not I'm going to do it as to whether or not people get why I'm doing it. Because those people who get it, get it and enjoy it. And those who don't, won't. Well, that's not in my control. And I'm, I'm, I'm really okay with that. So if other people are not, I'm okay, then figure yourself out. So anyway, that's, so that's the plan with this, is I'm just gonna keep on going until I'm done with these. These are mannequin heads that I'm making into planters. There's, there's really no rocket science around it. <laughs> uh, and the questions aren't bad ones, they're really good ones, because it's kind of like, usually there's like, I have a project, I have a beginning, middle, and ending of a project, which, you know, is great to have for projects. Um, it is sort of the normal way of doing a project, but have you met me? You have, haha, -ha, hi there. Um, because I am not that person that I feel like I need to have a beginning, middle and ending of my projects. Um, because my projects are um, things that bring me joy and give me energy and inspire me throughout the rest of my life and are not necessarily with a, a specific purpose that it has to be blah, 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 or I'm doing it because of blah, blah, blah. I have a lot of that in my life. I'm good with that. Um, I, I, I love having those projects. Those are really good, you know. I, you know, we're getting ready to have the kitchen redone. So I have these projects to do. I love working on the house. I love having really you know, defined projects. But when it comes to art, um, unless I'm working on a commission painting or I am just painting for the sake of painting, which gets to be difficult because, I mean, the painting's not difficult, but the, what do I then do with the four foot by four foot painting? Um, I don't really like painting over my paintings because I like my paintings uh, for the most part. I don't think I've ever done a painting that I just didn't like. I mean, I have paintings that I'm like, oh, well, that was, that was a moment, but I'm not like going to sit and criticize myself about where I was at that moment painting. I'll find something cool about it that I like and move on. So I've got, needless to say, a basement full of paintings <laughs> that are, are gonna be put in a dumpster when I die. Um, Cause other people are gonna be like, and eh, there's the bunch of his paintings that are just kinda uh, there. Uh, Cause there's the sure as hell isn't enough wall space in, our, in any house that I've ever owned. Um, for these gigantic things. All right, so there we go. Look at us. And I'm right on time. 
So this flap, I'm gonna do a little bit of just before I leave to thicken up the paint on it because I've got all that marker that's showing through and get some real straight. There we go, maybe there. So I put down the cut, the light, I dab on the dark, streak it up. That's exactly what I want. And we have Barney, the bar oh, Barney the Barnacle Man needs a little zhuzhing around his face. Oh, wow, I like him. All right, I'm gonna pick him up and show him to you. Put my water in. I didn't need the other one yet, but I will. And what do you think? Do, 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 do. Can you even see? Yes, you can. Pretty, right? That's exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going to figure out what colors. I think I'm going to go with like coral colors, like something around this idea with the really bright, funky. And I'm going to the next installment or next episode will be painting barnacles on Barney the Barnacle Man. All right. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you're up for the next episode, click on the next one or let it scroll to it or let it do whatever it does. I don't know. Subscribe if you would. Um, the more subscribers we get, the I don't know what happens with it. But um, share with your friends. Share with Facebook and all those other fun places if you think of it. And um, like, like and subscribe. I think I'm supposed to say that. So I'm going to say that. Um, anyway, so I hope you have a wonderful day. And um, oh, good Lord, I'm a mess. Um, have fun. Love one another. There's not enough love in the world. Thank you, Elton John. All right, bye.